What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we're going to be speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve 16. I'm sure you've seen a speed ramp effect before. It's simply when someone manipulates the frame rate of a clip real time. Now there's a lot of ways to do this, but there's also a lot of things to keep in mind when shooting for a speed ramp. So let's actually go get some shots and then bring them back here, put them in DaVinci Resolve, and I'll show you where to take it from there. My first tip when it comes to speed ramping is very important to do this in slow-mo. You need that uh, drastic uh, slowdown from normal speed to super slow-mo. So I like to do it in 120 frames a second. You can also do this in 72 frames a second or um, 96. 60 at the least, 60 at the least. Uh, just because the, the effect isn't really that dramatic when you're going from real-time speed to half speed. Uh, if you can go from real-time speed to three times slower, then you'll be in really good shape. So the next most important thing is your movement. What it's gonna look like in post is that I'm whipping it myself. Like I'm quickly whipping it up, slowing it down, and then bringing it back down. But in all actuality, I'm just making one smooth motion. Kind of slow, not too slow, but not too fast. Just one smooth motion. And in post, I'll show you guys how to actually speed ramp the beginning and the ends to make it look like you're whipping. Because really you're just whipping in post. You're not whipping in real life. So don't whip in real life. Just make a smooth motion, whether you're moving in or moving back or kind of doing a diagonal kind of cross like this, or whether you're whipping down. Try to just do one solid movement and then in post you do all the magic. Now that we are back in front of the computer, we can really have some fun. Uh, and my shots personally are from the GH5, and it does 120 frames a second, but it converts it in the camera down to whatever frame rate that you're looking for. In this instance, I'm going with 29.9 frames a second, and I'm gonna need to speed these shots up on the front end and on the back end to get that speed ramp effect that we're going for. And the first thing I like to do is just find a good shot. Now, you can see that I took a few of these shots, and this is the one I actually used for the B-roll sequence earlier. Um, uh, but I just kept getting the shot until I felt like my focus was on where I want the people to look at because that's what you got to think about in these speed ramps is what do you want people to really focus on and you kind of want to slow down in that moment so in this instance let's say I'm coming out of the bag and then I want people to focus about right there and then I want to whip it back so I can go to the beginning of where I want this clip to start Let's say right when the movement starts, press I for, to make an endpoint and then drag the cursor down to where I want the clip to end and press O to make an out point. Then I can just click on this little video icon here, drag this into the timeline. From here, you'll want to right click the clip in the timeline and click on retime controls and then right click again and go to retime curve and that will allow you to bend the curve to kind of get a smoother more organic looking transition i'm going to make a little more space here and then i'll come down to where i want the clip to slow down in the beginning i want to whip in and then slow down about here and so i'll make a keyframe here with this keyframe marker to the right and then now you can notice that our clip is in two separate parts the first half says 100 percent, and the second half says 100 percent. now that means 100 percent speed so right now it's just playing at the normal 100 percent speed if i click on this little arrow down i can go to change speed and then come down to 800 percent. you can see that there's a lot of different options but i like to go with the highest speed in that option uh, in those options and then from here i can zoom in a little bit so if we play that from the beginning Oh, that is sick. That is sick already. Oh, it doesn't even take that much to really make some dope shots. Um, and obviously, we'll need to do this at the end of the shot. So if I play that through, and let's say we want to focus, and then we want to start whipping out. So I'll make another keyframe there. Click our arrow down on this second half that we want to speed up. Go to change speed and go back to 800%. And now we should have a nice speed at the beginning, and then another speed up at the end. 
And that looks good, it's cool, but obviously doesn't have that natural whip that we'll need to kind of pull this off and make it look like the camera's actually doing this motion because that's kind of the trick in this whole thing. We don't wanna make it seem like it's something we did in post. We wanna make it seem like this magical camera is just like whipping around these scenes and it's like, oh man, you don't even really think about a person holding it because the camera's doing stuff that you're like, oh, a person can't be doing that. But at the same time, you're like, a computer didn't do it. What's going on here? So that's what we're going for. And to get that realism, uh, to get that mix in between. You see that it's made some little dots here in our retime frame window. I can click on the first one here, and right now you can see that it's on the linear curve mode. Uh, right here, there's an ease button. If I click this, then you, you can see it gave us some handles on each end. And I can drag these out just a little bit, but I really don't want to ease this too much because I still want it to seem really drastic and kind of a drastic slowdown. And if I whip it too much, then it'll kind of just seem normal. Um, so I just want it to kind of have a little bit of easing there. And then if we play it back, that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. But one thing is I want it a little faster. And so what I can do in this instance is if I take this handle on the bottom of this keyframe and I move it around, it'll change where the keyframe is in the clip, but it will not change our speeds, um, like our percentages of the speed of the frame rate. So we can kind of re... Yeah, I like that a lot better. That's nice. And then obviously we want to do the same thing to the second keyframe. Click that and then hit the ease button. And now we should have that nice ease in and ease out on both ends. Uh, but one thing I would like to do is speed up the second half. So if I elongate this clip a little bit, and if I make another keyframe here towards the end, I can take the top handle of this keyframe. Let me zoom in a little more. I can take the top ha handle of this keyframe and move this back and it'll actually change the speed of the frame rate. And it'll make it higher if I move this back, kind of making our ending shorter. Now, if we turn on the loop button and play this back, already this looks really good. Just that easing alone um, and speeding up the ending has really helped this out and really helped to sell the effect. Now, there's several things you can do to help sell this effect, and the next one is blur. This has no motion blur at the moment, and if a real camera was whipping through the air like that, there would definitely be blur everywhere. So, how I like to add the blur is by using an adjustment layer. And if I go ahead and right click and collapse our retime controls, since we don't need those, it looks awesome already. And we pull down the adjustment clip, we can add a zoom blur, which is under open effects and zoom blur, and then go to the controls of the zoom blur. Under inspector in the top right, you can go to open effects, and then where it says border type, go to reflect. That'll get rid of the black border around the edges. And then from there, you can actually just shorten the adjustment layer to uh, how long you want the blur to be. So let's say I want this nice motion blur kind of going on right now. And then when it gets to here, I want it to have no blur at all. I lengthen it to there and then take this handle at the end and just fade the adjustment layer out. That way the strength of the blur will slowly fade out as you get to that slow-mo por portion of the video. If we play that back, yeah, that is nice. Now, of course, I used a zoom blur because I'm pulling the camera back. And I would use a zoom if I was pushing the camera forward or pulling the camera back really fast. But I would use a directional blur if I was going from right to left. I'd use like a horizontal angle or a vertical angle if I was whipping the camera up and down. You gotta make sure you use the right type of blur depending on your direction. So if we go back into the clip, we can actually copy this adjustment layer to the end by holding Alt and just dragging this adjustment layer over. And then we can kind of reverse our fades and fade out the front instead of the end. And now we'll have that blur coming at the end as we speed up the frame. Yeah, that looks really good. And I can make this a little shorter, it lasts a little long. And maybe fade this out a little more towards the end. Yeah, that is sweet. I'll we'll probably make this a little longer in the beginning. Yeah, that's nice. 
So if you're gonna make a whole sequence of shots like this, like I did in the beginning of this video, then you would kind of want the next shot to match the camera movement of the shot that we're using. So this shot in itself kind of pulls back and whipped backwards. So if I had another shot that also whipped backwards, that would make this the easiest to kind of pull off. So this clip up here of the drone, I'm kind of pulling back and then I keep pulling back. So if I drag this into the timeline, and then choose where I kind of want this to end. Let's say about right here. Drag this out. I can right click this again, go to retime controls, right click, retime curve, and then make our keyframe here where I want the clip to slow down. And then go to our rechange, uh, change speed, 800, and then come to where I want it to zoom back out, make another keyframe, change the percentage again to 800. And then make sure we ease our keyframes and we should have a pretty nice little transition there. Yeah, that's nice. We can make this a little shorter here. Yeah, that's awesome. So fortunately, we made those adjustment layers earlier and all we have to do is drag out this one that ended this clip and drag it into the next clip and then fade it out where the speed ramp stops. And now we'll have that one nice blur from one clip to the next. And it stops in the appropriate place. Maybe I could pull one more keyframe over. And that is awesome. And then we can even hold Alt again, copy this to the end. And then we have one that takes us out and back in. Yes, that is awesome. I love that. So one last thing that really helps sell this kind of stuff is sound effects. Now in the earlier video, I had street sound effects and helicopter sound effects and, and swoosh sound effects. That is by far one of the go-tos. So if I collapse this stuff and we go find a nice little swoosh effect, uh, let's see. Now I have a pretty long motion here. So I want one that's pretty long. Um, I think this one here might be pretty good. That one's all right, but I want something deeper, a little more gutty, you know? I like that. Let me pull that into the timeline, give us some more room here so we can see that. If we can match that up with the motion, maybe scoot that back a little bit. And now, okay, maybe one more to the right. And if I turn this down a little bit, that's kind of nice. And I mean, you can even, you know, EQ this down a little bit, make it sound even more. That's cool. And if you throw some music in there, throw some other sound effects in there, the more sound effects, the better. But anyway, I could do this all day. Who doesn't love speed ramping? But leave a comment down below if you've done any speed ramping. If you have some speed ramping on your channel, leave a link to it down below so we can all see each other's kind of cool speed ramp tricks. I know you guys are down with the epic B-roll. And also make sure to like this video if you like this video. If you didn't like the video, then like the video anyway. It really helped me out. And make sure to subscribe. And as always, I'm Marcel. And this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.